Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 27th day of February, and we are almost to the end of the month and going into March here in a couple days. And I'd like to greet you, as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he, too, can be your Lord and Savior if you'll just humble yourself and repent from what you're trusting in and turn to God and trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. And so today's topic is titled, Life-Changing Bible Reading. And before we get started on that, we're going to sing today's scripture song, which is from Philippians 2.13. So I'll press play on the CD here, and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So Philippians 2.13. Maybe. Philippians 2.13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. pleasure. Amen. All right. Sing it out. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God, it is God. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Praise the Lord. All right. So, we'll go back and we'll sing uh, yesterday's scripture song and then today's a uh, couple more times. And so now it's time to get into today's topic titled Life-Changing Bible Reading for this 27th day of February. And the passage is from Joshua 1, verse 8. And it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And we should meditate day and night on this book, the Bible, amen, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Joshua 1, 8. And our author today is C.S., that is the initials for, I believe it's Chris Staub. Uh, let me see here. C.S. Yep, that would be Chris Staub, and he's the pastor of Silvery uh, Lane Baptist Church in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. So let me read you what he wrote on this topic of life-changing Bible reading. And he says here, Charles Finney, who lived from 1792 to 1875, was considered to be a, a hard case by his pastor. He says in uh, quotations there, so Charles Finney uh, was considered to be a hard case by his pastor. He was an up-and-coming attorney, uh, yet never owned the Bible. He was given a copy and began to read it sparingly, uh, then more and more. Finally, God convinced him through his reading. Amen. Or um, convicted him. Sorry. Finally, God convicted him through his reading. He turned to Christ and became one of America's greatest evangelists. The Bible became the number one guide to Finney. Amen. John uh, uh, Wanamaker, John Wanamaker, uh, who lived from 1838 to 1922, was a great merchant in America. He claimed to have made purchases of property that were valued in excess of $20 billion. Uh, however, his greatest purchase was made when 11 years old he bought a Bible for $2.75, which he paid for in installments. 
A New York paper wrote a story about him with this headline, Later Details in Millions Small Compared... Uh, Later de uh, deals in millions small compared with buying the Holy Writ at 11. Amen. The Bible became the greatest gift of all gifts to Wanamaker. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, these uh, are just a couple of the millions of lives changed by simply reading and following Scripture. What difference has uh, the uh, What difference has the Bible? Uh, what difference has Bible reading made in you? Hmm, that's a good question. What difference has Bible reading made in you? It can be life-changing and impactfully directing as you read the scriptures daily. Amen. So let's read the scriptures daily, and it can be life-changing and impactfully directing as we read the scriptures daily. Amen. So these two men uh, got saved, Charles Finney and John Wanamaker. Amen. So I have to look those two... Uh, guys up and check out their uh, um, biography. Amen. Alright, so that is the end of the topic on life-changing Bible reading. And now, we're going to go ahead and pick up the Victorious Christian Living book by Brother James Knox. And if you have a copy of this book, uh, you can turn along with me to this next topic. We just finished uh, the Golden Calf Affair uh, topic yesterday, and now we're going into a new topic titled Jesus Teaching on Practical Righteousness. And there's a quote here by Philip Rogers uh, McGee, and it says here, The pages of history are peppered with accounts of people like us soldiering, uh, soldiering themselves to leaders who never once minced words about uh, what their followers are getting in for. People like us linking themselves to causes, the staggering cost of which they well understood. And that's from Philip Rogers uh, McGee. And now it's time to get into chapter 1, which is on page 239 in the copy of the book I have. So if you have that particular copy, you can turn along with me. And uh, Jesus teaching on Practical Righteousness, Chapter 1. So Brother James writes here as we get started. <clears throat> he says, We now move to a new section of studies wherein we shall consider some of the teachings of Jesus with regard to righteousness in our daily living. He says, As I bega began these lessons, something quite interesting came to my attention. Uh, look with me at the first words of Jesus, record, uh, of Jesus recorded in the the New Testament, uh, they tell quite a tale. And he has a little note down here at the bottom. I'll read that first. He says, I understand there are statements in Luke which predate uh, these chronologically, but these are the first words of Jesus recorded for us as presented to us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're going to read these first words of Jesus. And it says, And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Matthew three fifteen. It is written, Man shall not live by bre uh, bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. Uh, it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Matthew 4, 7. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Matthew 4.10 Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4.17 And finally, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 4.19 uh, These first recorded sayings of our Lord summarize all that he would say to man with regard to their daily living. Amen. <clears throat> Alright, so we have ten uh, points here. He says, number one, make sure I'm on the right page. All right, he says, number one, we should be righteous to the full. Such conduct is becoming of those associated with the holy name of God. Number two, we may have all material possessions and provision, but without God's words, there is neither true life nor real living. Number three, it is not gleanings from the Bible that we need, but every word of God. That's right. Amen. 
For temptation is a part of life, but must be sternly refused. Number five, we are to worship only God. Number six, we are to serve only God. Number seven, repentance is needed by all. Eight, the Lord desires to rule and reign in our hearts right now. Nine, we are called to follow Jesus. And ten, he desires that we put, uh, put, uh, pull others from a world of sin and bring them to Christ. Amen. <clears throat> so there's a list of ten things there. I'll repeat them to you really quick if you're taking notes. If you want to take notes later, again, number one is we should be righteous to the full. Uh, such conduct is becoming of those associated with the holy name of God. Number two, we uh, may have an all-material possession and provision, uh, but without God's words, there is neither true life nor real uh, living. Three, it is not gleanings from the Bible that we need, but every word of God. Uh, number four is temptation is a part of life, but we must sternly, re uh, but it must be sternly refused. Number five, we are to worship only God. Number six, we are to serve only God. Number seven, repentance is needed by all. Eight, the Lord desires to rule and reign in our hearts right now. Nine, we are called to follow Jesus. And number ten, he desires that we pull others from a world of sin and bring them to Christ. The Bible continually confirms itself to be the very word of God. These in, uh, initial sayings of the Lord and the order in which we have, have them could not be the cunning device of human authors but show the intelligence of Jehovah in directing the written uh, record. Amen. That's the truth right there. Continuing on, uh, it says here, In the first of our verses, we find a great man, John, telling the man Christ Jesus that he really does not need to obey the commands of a prophet. Jesus does not view himself as superior to the instructions given by his Father to all men, but see sees it his ho uh, holy duty to fulfill all righteousness. We will find that good men, ministers, sincere women, and devout persons and in and out of church circles often tell us that there is no requirement for full devotion or exceptional righteousness. In fact, most professing Christians today scoff at the idea of obeying God so fully. Jesus first recorded of uh, Jesus' first recorded words call on us to do everything that is right. Amen. Uh, so we need to take heed to that. Uh, in the second of our verses, a man who has not eaten for 40 days is offered bread, and he has the power to satisfy the legitimate needs of his flesh. We may see no reason why it would have been sinful to have turned those stones in, into needed food, but he preferred to feed upon the word of his Father. It is not wrong for us to use our talents and abilities to provide the things needed to sustain and even to enjoy life in this temporal world, but will we consider God's every word um, of greater importance than our daily needs and provisions? Hmm. Yeah, will we? Uh, let us live so that we might Echo the words of Job 23:12. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. The third saying, reminding the devil that a man should not tempt God, calls us back to our studies on 1 Corinthians 10. We are reminded that while our Lord is filled with grace, mercy, love, and compassion, he is not to be trifled with. We should never assume that sin will be ignored by one so holy and pure. The next words from the lips of the Lord are an order for, uh, for Satan to leave him. He declares that the Father will be given all of his worship and all of his service. The word to us is certain. Or, yeah, the word to us is certain. We are not to uh, parlay with the devil. No discussion is warranted. We are told to draw an eye to God, James 4, 8. It is also a reminder that worship is not optional. It is commanded, Thou shalt worship. Neither is service something we can take or leave. Him shalt thou serve. We are created to live a life of devotion to God and to God alone. 
The fifth time Jesus Christ speaks, he tells those who would preach for him to begin their message to one and all with the command to repent. The sinless Son of Man is the measure, and not a soul fails to come short of that mark. Uh, we do not all sin alike, but we all alike are sinners. The order from the Lord of Lords to everyone breathing is repent. Change your thoughts to God's thoughts. Change your ways to God's ways. These instructions also snap us out of bondage to the sight of our eyes and remind us that whatever the condition of the present evil world, whatever the trials surrounding us, God's rule is nigh. He may not uh, take the thrones of the earth's kingdom, but he may have our hearts. He may not set foot on the Mount of Olives, but he can subdue our passions. He may not rule at Jerusalem, but he can be made the Lord of our lives. He, his governing power is as near as the hand at the end of our arm. The sixth of Jesus' uh, first words begin with, Follow me. Our dispos disposition or circumstances will likely determine how we hear these words. Are we being commanded to make Christ our leader? Of course we are, but this uh, should be seen as an incredible invitation. Amen. Uh, in a world where almost everyone seems completely confused, where men repeatedly make the worst of decisions, uh, where women appear incapable of making right choices, the Lord Jesus Christ offers to be our guide. He bids us walk with him through the maze, directed by his wisdom, and uh, uh, lead us by uh, and led by and led by his love. We need not stumble about in the darkness, nor run ourselves into one dead end after another. Follow me, says the one who knows the end from the beginning. Amen. Uh, and I will make you. How limited we are in so very many ways. Yet Christ offers to make us much more than we could ever hope to be by birth, by training, or by force of will. We try to improve and do not. We resolve to do better and fail, for we are what we are, mortals in bodies of flesh. Then along comes the Ancient of Days, the Mighty One, saying, I will make you. Lord, you know I am not brave. And he says, I will make you. Lord, you will. Uh, your will is too high for me. I will make you, he says. Lord, I cannot seem to be the man you want me to be. I will make you, he says again. Lord, this call to love is beyond me. I will make you, he says once again. Lord, these commandments are contrary to my nature. I will make you, he says. Once again, these words were first spoken to men who had a lifetime of training in catching fish, mending nets, and selling their uh, catch, but they were being asked to become preachers, evangelists, and eventually pillars in the Lord's church. They certainly were not up to the task, but Jesus said, I will make you. Amen. So what we have here, uh, excuse me, so what we have been heretofore may be overcome if we will but follow Jesus. What we should be and what we need to be is uh, coupled with these words, I will make you. In closing, let us read together these first six sayings of Jesus. Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Wonderful Lord, amazing book. Amen. Praise God for that. And that is the end of chapter 1 on Jesus' teaching on practical righteousness. And tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll cover chapter 2. So let's take heed to these words that Jesus said and let him uh, uh, rule and reign in our lives and give our lives to him fully. Amen. All right, let me get a drink of water.
Okay, now we're going to sing some scripture songs again before I wrap up the uh, broadcast today. So if you have your Bible handy, you can turn along with me to, uh, let's see where we at, Philippians 3, 13 through 14, was yesterday's scripture song, so we'll bring, bring, uh, sing that first. Philippians 3, Amen. 13 and 14. Brethren, Brother, I, I count, count not myself to have apprehended, apprehended but, but this, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. All right, here we go. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark, I press toward the mark, for the prize of the high calling of God, I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark, I press toward the mark, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Brethren, press toward the mark, press toward the mark. Amen. All right, now we're going to conclude with today's. Philippians 2.13 Philippians 2, For, For it is, it is God, God which, which worketh, worketh in you both to will and to do of his, his good, pleasure. good pleasure. Amen. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God it is God Which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God, it is God. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God. about wrap it up for today's devotional and broadcast and so let me give you tomorrow's scripture song for the last day of february before i go it's ephesians 2 8 and 9 and it says for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast that uh that pretty much says it all right there ephesians 2 8 and 9 for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, uh, uh, trusting Jesus is by faith, amen, and not of works. So, trust Jesus Christ, and he'll give you eternal life, amen. You don't have to work for it, you don't have to pay for it. It's a free gift, free gift of salvation can be yours today. If you'll just humble yourself, repent of what you're trusting in, and trust in Jesus, and he will save you and give you eternal life. Amen. All right. So tomorrow's uh, topic for the Baptist Bread devotional will be titled, Faith is the Victory. Amen. It sure is. Faith is the Victory. And there's a good hymn uh, titled that also. So uh, perhaps I'll sing that uh, uh, hymn tomorrow to go along with this uh, topic on Faith is the Victory. Amen. And the passage is from Hebrews 11, 6a. Uh, the first part of uh, verse 6. So we'll cover that tomorrow for the last day of this month. Amen. And then, of course, we'll cover chapter 2, 
from the topic from the Victorious uh, Christian Living book on Jesus' teaching on practical righteousness, chapter 2. And if you'd like to get a copy of this book or any of Brother James's books, they're available on the church website at www.jameswnox.org. And of course, if you want to get the a box of these devotionals to keep one for yourself and then pass the others out to friends, family, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, it's available here on this website at www.timgreenministries.org. Amen. And then finally, we got the scripture songs, which are a good way to learn scripture. And they're available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's uh, uh, mission page website. And it's uh, www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And uh, they're playing all day long, today's is, and if you'd like to download them, they're available to download, or you can order the CDs, and uh, these are all the covers on the back here, so you can see them for each month for uh, year one, he's in the process of uh, doing year two, so hopefully you'll get that done here, uh, Lord willing, soon, and then we'll have some more scripture songs to learn for year two, once he gets them all done and ready and uh, prepared, amen, so pray for them, and all missionaries out there trying to get on the field and those that have just gotten back on the field and uh, pray for them and uh, their work that they'll be doing to um, plant churches and tell people about Jesus and uh, um, you can do that too, amen, in your own town. All right, so uh, that'll be it for today. So Lord willing, see you tomorrow. And until then, may the Lord richly bless you and have a great and wonderful rest of your day, amen. All right, bye-bye for now. Thanks for watching.